Previously on the Night VP channel. Friends of people all together. Yeah! <laughs> and coming up. But I find you very rude. <laughs> The Novimpia Channel is made possible thanks to our gorgeous patrons who get access to exclusive garbo. And thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Thank you, this snafu! Come and join us, friends and critters. It's time for an all new faves and shitters. That was quite nice. I thought that sounded quite nice, actually. Yeah. Um, I might go back and take that melody and turn it into a full song. Because <laughs> I struggle with melodies. Can you even remember what that melody was? No, but I've recorded it. It's recorded. Oh. So shove that on your ass. <laughs> um, but Nova and I are doing new music and we're trying to do like, like songs. <laughs> no. And whenever I sing a song, it like always ends up just sounding like Shania Twain ka -ching, And I don't understand what that is. But like, there's never any other melody in my head. <laughs> Can you hear it ring? It makes you wanna sing. I feel the earth move. Ring. Oh my god! We were thinking of Ring in the yeah. a song association game. Green. Around our home. Oh yeah. Home. Oh. oh yeah. We're not playing that anymore. <laughs> we're here for a Faves and Shitters welcome. <laughs> um, I didn't, yeah, hadn't told me that. What, that this is Faves and Shitters? Like you're struggling writing this song because you keep writing all? Shania Twain. Yeah, and I want it to be like a moody <laughs> banger and, all, and right in the middle of it, Shania Twain comes in and she's just like, lots of money and Faves. <laughs> ka <-ching. laughs> no, Oh, now that I've um, stopped Nova from talking, I don't know if that cut's gonna work. What do you think? Probably will. I think there'll be some editing magic in there. Uh, I, we're gonna take a brief moment now, Nova, to talk about something that's so important to us. Okay. Really valuable, actually. It's the sponsor of this video, and it comes from our good friends over at Surfshark! We've been using Surfshark for bloody ages at this point, so we can actually testify to how amazing it is. It's a VPN or a virtual private network that keeps you safe as you browse because it encrypts all the data set between your device and the internet. So there's no risk of your personal data being compromised. And if that wasn't enough, by downloading Surfshark, you can swap your real world location to a completely new one. So regardless of what country you're in, you can use Surfshark to switch your location. You'll immediately have access to a much wider variety of content and all your favourite streaming platforms. What have we got? We've got uh, Now TV. Yeah. There's Hulu. Yeah. Hey You. And the whole thing is like super great if you're like us and you follow Eurovision season. They've got servers in over 100 countries. So we can check in and see what's going on in Albania. No, but what is going on? I couldn't that, tell you. Oh, should we have a look? Festival Yukungus. Not What this. do they do? Not what, again. What are they thinking the competition is? <laughs> do they understand what the competition is? Definitely understand what television is. Oh, yeah, that's also true. Okay, so it's my birthday this weekend. I'll expect messages. And we're doing a traitors themed house party. The traitors, the TV show. So we're still using Surfshark to switch to Canada because their streaming service, CTV, they've got like every English speaking version of the traitors. We're still watching the traitors New Zealand. Oh, this is a spoiler, turn the camera away. Because it's never too late to get ideas for my birthday party. Why am I like this? As another example, if you're at home right now in the United States of America, you can download Surfshark, switch to the UK, and then you get access to different shows on Netflix like RuPaul's Drag Race. Have you heard yeah, of that? Yeah. Heard of that one? Yeah. I don't know what that one is. Do you watch RuPaul's? <laughs> So we have told you before about how we have personally used Surfshark in the past to get better prices on airline tickets. And you can even mask your internet traffic from your ISP. It's also available for download on all of your devices with unlimited logins. There's absolutely no risk in trying Surfshark because they offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you're looking for a new VPN or just looking to upgrade the crap who one you've already got, then check out the link in the description box below. Using our code NOVIMPIA, you can now get up to six extra months for free. So make sure you check out the link in the description and the pinned comment and thank you so much to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Muchas gracias. Was that right? Gracias. Muchas gracias. Yeah. Just thank you very much. Yeah. Probably. You won. ka -ching. Okay, if you're new to the channel, if you've not seen one of these before, Faves and Shitters is basically Oprah's favourite things that we've robbed. 
from yes. right under her where she sits. Buy me diamonds and rubies. I'm crazy about Bentley. Diamonds and rubies. Oh, that was off key. <laughs> I want Bentley's. No. Uh, three favourites that we're enjoying right now. Three shitters. And then three things that I like. Oh, what's that? Who we? No thanks. Um, it's traditional here at the Chanel for me to begin. Do you know what, though? I think you should start this time. Oh. This one I'm just going to get out of the way. Favourite thing. Raindrops on roses. <laughs> Britney's autobiography, The Woman and Me. I actually bought the physical book and I read the book cover to cover. My like two cents on the whole thing is that if you are a Britney super fan, there's next to no new information in that because it's all stuff that kind of leaked or has been available or speculated. But it's nice to hear it. I, I would say in her own voice, obviously a ghostwriter was used, but it's very well written. It's pleasant to read. The topics aren't pleasant, but it, it, it creates such an atmosphere and a setting. It's very immersive, the writing of the book. So it is quite enjoyable to read and really put yourself in her shoes. That's takeaways, nice. takeaways. Justin Timberlake can eat dirt and die trash. And so can the rest of her entire family. Death to all of them. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Uh, that would be Wendy Williams said that. Yeah, she did. She was and also she was on right. The Masked Singer as well. Do you remember that? I would really recommend, um, even if you have only a casual passing interest in the situation or Britney herself, there's an audio book that you could listen to. I would really, really recommend it. It's very, very interesting. I would like to thank Nova for essentially being the audio book because she would tell me what happened at the end of every single page. Yeah. So for five days. <laughs> I was like, oh, I've just got to the I was VMAs when so she did give me more. I love that you, you know, read it and your Nova is obviously super into Britney Spears. I don't think I ever asked once any of the information she gave me and there was lots of it to take in. I thought I should sit and take notes. I just don't want you to feel was left out. going to be a que pop quiz at the end of it? I mean, maybe. Pop quiz, asshole. Michelle Williams did the audio book. She did. Not Break the Door, Michelle Williams, oh. the other one. Break the, I love Break the Dawn. <laughs> it's one of my faves, Break Could the Dawn. Could you imagine if hashtag Paul Michelle did the audio pick? That would be so random. Don't so say weird. that. I think that's so mean when people say Paul Michelle. <laughs> oh. When Jesus says, yeah. nobody can say, ka -ching. My first fave is a televisual program that I've just finished. I finished watching it just when I was getting ready uh, today, actually. It was on ITV in 2006. It's called Afterlife. Okay, so oh. Afterlife was a supernatural drama that was on sort of like probably about nine o'clock on ITV years and years ago. It's about 2006. Um, I was in school when I watched it. Leslie Sharp plays a medium and it's not like explicitly explained that she's neurodivergent apart from that she's like can actually see um, right. ghosts. I think that's how she played it though and the guy who was in The Walking Dead plays, what's his name? The oh. main dude. Carl. Yeah, him. Carl! Carl! What? Andrew, no, Andrew something. Carl. Andrew. Lincoln, no, who's that? I can picture his face. He plays a, a, a psychologist, um, a, a professor, writing a book about the psychology of mediumship. So he doesn't believe her at all, which is like the, the dichotomy, right? Right. Andrew Lincoln. Oh, it is Andrew Lincoln. Shut up. Where did I- Is that him though? Or is that like someone else? Where did I pull that else? out from? Uh, what did you just pull out of your belly hole? Uh, a piece of cheese. Some of the storylines are so clever. So it's basically that he does not believe a word she's saying. He thinks that she's ruining people's lives, but she is so stuck in her head because nobody believes her. Classic pairing of a believer and a skeptic. <sighs> Classic pairing. The music is exceptional. The acting is a bit suspicious in places, but it's very it's nicely put together. Six, isn't it's it? a while ago. Some of the storylines are that so. An excuse for bad acting. Because it was old. It I don't there, know. Because the acting <laughs> did, was was shit a while ago. But what? Especially for kids. Like kids, they never used to. Jesus Christ! If you're gonna watch this, you, I, I, you can probably find it on Amazon. How did I fucking watch it? Oh, I have the DVD. Granny. Oh. There's one episode in particular which I do not watch in the first season called Daniel 1 and 2. And if you want to look up what the storyline of that episode is, then fine, go ahead. But I think in retrospect, I don't think it was their intention, but I think what the storyline of that episode puts across is just so irresponsible. But season two, it gets so emotional and so, it's really hardcore. It's just so sad. Like it's so sad and good. And there aren't enough shows about ghosts. There you go. Ghosts used to be like all the rage. Do you remember Ghost Whisperer? Jim, wake up! 
<laughs> ghosts, and then it became vampires. And what are we on now? Pirates. Werewolves, and then, yeah, pirates. Pirates, I, I feel like, is the moment. most recent thing. But ghosts, yeah. there isn't enough about it. And I think it was overlooked. They should have done another one. Because oh, it was good. Was everywhere as well, wasn't it? With The Walking Dead. Zombie, zombie Nation. Everywhere. No, 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 no. So my first shitter, this breaks my heart. It might be a bit pessimistic because I would love to look back on this video in a year's time and be like, she was wrong. But, 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 but. but. I feel it in my waters, it's gonna be shit. What? Maybe last year or the year before at, I wanna say the um, Game Awards. I think it was the Game Awards. It might have been Tokyo Game Show. You so know what? Weird. Why don't you put on your running shoes and get to the Point. It was announced that the Silent Hill franchise was coming back to life from its like slumber of a million years <sighs> and there were loads of titles announced. They were going to do a like remake of Silent Hill 2. They were doing a new game. I think it was a sequel. They were doing like a spin-off called Silent Hill Ascension and I think another movie. There were a whole bunch of titles that were announced. Hideo Kojima isn't part of Konami anymore and therefore would not be involved in this and Silent Hill was his... Bebe. Yeah, he he conceived that. That was the first red flag. Like, how would you carry on such an iconic franchise without its original creator? That's a dick move. What's he the left... shitter here, though? So the shitter is, we have now had one of these titles released, yes. or it's coming out, Silent Hill Ascension. Mm -hmm. It is the most <laughs> embarrassing cash grab. <gasps> it is oh. so shit. Let me explain to you the concept of this quote unquote game. But you've not played it though, so no, you don't but know. I've I've seen all I need to see. Oh go on. So it's basically like a visual novel. You know, like some games is literally okay. just like you click and it might be like, should we yep. go left or right? Really, really shoddy 3D graphics. And the idea is that you create an account, you have an avatar, there's weekly episodes, it's a live stream and you can watch and you can chat, almost like it's on Twitch, and you supposedly have the ability to vote on certain things to see how it affects the story and the characters, which is kind of an interesting concept, but then you realise that to vote on things, you have to use an in-game currency, it, the whole, oh. the, and, and the more you pay, the more weight your votes have to influence the oh, story. That's disgusting. You have an avatar How can they get that obviously that? you can buy clothes for. There's so many microtransactions in this. This it's just completely filled to the fucking brim with microtransactions. When you're watching the stream, you can pay to like have stickers and stuff come up. Oh piss off, Konami. But the actual thing doesn't even look that good in the first place. It looks ugly. And now I'm just like, oh, there's a trailer for the Silent Hill 2 remake, which I also don't like the look of. I recently played Silent Hill 2 for the first time on Twitch, the original one, and it's a fucking masterpiece. Christ, when does it end? And this trailer for the remake looks bad. Oh. So my shitter is, I just feel like this franchise is doomed. I, I Dead in the water. I don't have good feelings for all of these titles. I think it's all going to be money grabbing shit. And are you willing so to die sad. on that Silent Hill? <laughs> got lipstick all over this. That was a really long, I needed to explain all of that though, that was really long winded. Oh my God, she knows. And we'll see how much of that makes it into the final cut. Probably, <laughs> probably next to none of it. Um, so thank you very much. My shitter then. Do I know what it is? My first shitter is songs that are like two minutes long. Oh my God, that's a great one. Excellent one. Laureen, one of our favorite artists. Is never... this love, is this love, is this love? No. Is it love? Never want to stop talking about Laureen. However, she's released the first single after Tattoo, which won Eurovision. Mm -hmm. And it is a lovely song, Is It Love? It's like 30 seconds long. And this is a common thing that we keep fucking seeing because it means, I didn't fully understand it though. It means that you can so fit it into a TikTok. Well, partly that, but it's, um, songs are shorter so they're more likely to get radio play because it's easier to be squeezed into a playlist if it's shorter. That. Shut up. And also you can get more plays on like streaming, Spotify and stuff because, and YouTube because it's shorter so yeah. you can be listened to more I often. would like to make it known that I do not blame the artists for this. I don't no. blame the producers. It's the labels. It is, you know, you have it's to It's the bend. labels and the streaming services. It's a, it's a similar way to kind of like how platforms force people to make shorts. <laughs> which again, like a lot of people really don't want to do because it's like pseudo content. Sometimes people will just do any old shit in 30 seconds just to get you to watch another one so just the money can come in. ka -ching. Like it's just, it's not it's all like that. that it's not all like that, that, but you see the point I'm trying to make. So songs that are so short because Laureen Is It Love in particular, it just builds up perfectly 
And then it ends. It literally feels like there is a middle eight and a yeah, chorus. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a whole bit missing. It feels like when you would buy a, an MP3 ringtone back in like the early noughties oh. and it would just be a verse and a chorus. Do you remember when you first got like a polyphonic ringtone? That's all, think that's all we had. wanted, you know? When we were like 16, you just wanted a phone with a polyphonic ringtone. Oh, <gasps> how exciting. So I, have the I had randomly. the SpongeBob theme for a while. That's cool. I used to really like SpongeBob, like in the morning, but then, you know, most of us grow up. Can you hear the I would like there to be songs that are longer. I can <laughs> forgive a single having a radio edit if there's going to be an album, an extended album version to come. Like, there's no they're guarantee. not going to do that, are they? Because and if they not? have the shorter one and the longer one, it cancels, split. it cancels the purpose of Streams having just split. one short one. Yeah. I will forgive, but not forget. <laughs> I don't want to like flip the script a little bit, but I do have a, a shitter that ties in with that like so nicely. <sighs> you have to be different. Spotify. <laughs> oh, that, this is a nice segue. Yeah, okay, this makes sense. Spotify have recently said, isn't this 4215 pussy way? I don't understand how they can go through with this. Oh, yeah. But we will see. Come 2024, in order to start earning revenue on your music as an artist, your song has to receive 1,000 streams. So the first 1,000 streams you're just giving away for free. And before you can earn your first 0 0.003 cents, you have to have your song listened to a thousand times. How is this allowed? That's just theft. I don't understand. Yeah, but 0 0.003, give me two years and your dinner will be free. 16 points. A thousand streams <laughs> might not sound like much, but like if you are if you're an independent artist and you're really trying to break through, like and this industry is so disheartening as it is already to new independent artists. This is awful. They're such greedy assholes. How, how? I mean, a thousand streams isn't even that much money, but it's just the principle of it, knowing that you're going to get yeah, nothing from that. It's a dick move. It's but I guess so upsetting. Spotify more or less has a monopoly on on that though. Don't well, there's they? Apple, Apple music, music, and people keep saying that Apple Music is. Better. Apple bottom jeans boots with the fur. It's just such a difficult thing though because everybody uses Spotify and Spotify at this point is like the leading platform. Well, they're dickhead. They're all I greedy am tem dickheads. I am tempted to change to Apple Music though, but like you have such a library built up on Spotify already. Like, do you want to start from scratch? Like, do you know what I mean? Greedy it's assholes. I don't know. The older you get, don't you just kind of realize more and more, like every day that you wake up, you just realize that people are just selfish and greedy. Where did all the good guys go? If a stream is worth 0. 0.003 cents, how much is a thousand views worth? Neither. You can't figure that out? Is it not worth three, three, three cents? <laughs> three cents. <sighs> that is so shocking. And that is Nova's three cents on the matter. Do you know, the wordplay, I'm hitting it out of the park. Don't make me twist. Stop. <laughs> this is beautiful now. I should have brought it with me. That's what I said about the woman in me. Bugger hell. I'll, I'll, I'll retroactively put it in. I bought brand new slippers. Oh, fuck. Oh. Now listen, I am someone that loves a slipper. You do. Especially, I mean, I wear my slippers all year long and I won't apologize for it. But when it becomes like autumn, winter, I, I get super into the cozy cocoon zone. I'm so there, I live there. So it's a slipper, it's a nice blanket, candles, I like darkness and horror movies. Yeah, I'm always coming into the living room and you're just in pitch black and I'm like, I like shall darkness. we turn a light? No, I don't like freak? lights. This is very unusual for me. I like darkness. Like the coziest thing I can think of possibly ever watching is misery. And I know that's <laughs> quite, fucking that hell. speaks to my soul. Because he's in bed in the house, isn't he? So it's nice and cozy. I don't think that's the takeaway you're uh, supposed to have from that film. I think it's lovely. I really like it. I like having a hot bubble bath, candles, yeah. a green tea, super into it. And therefore slippers are a must. Now I usually wear like a mule. Old man <laughs> slippers they are, brown leather. Would you call that a moccasin? This is a moccasin. I've changed it. They're Uggs. <laughs> I've splashed out because the way I look at it, 
I wear them all day you long. You wear them all the time. All year long. So it's an investment piece. And I think that really speaks to sort of my soul is to have a nice, good slipper in the house. These are moccasins. They're a black suede with a um, like a, a wool lining. They're much more attractive than your last pair. They're very, very nice. And the black is much more I will more tell you, swish. if you're going to purchase some Ugg slippers, they run real small. <laughs> I was gonna return them, and I thought no, because they give so like hardcore. Did you not go? Did you not size up? I got an eleven. Oh, I would have tried an eleven and a half. They don't do half sizes, no. Oh well, then I would have gone for a twelve. That would seem frighteningly large. <sighs> Didn't mean to wake you. Okay, Netflix show, we're yet to finish, but really, really enjoying so far. I think we're about five, well, three episodes left. The Fall of the House of Usher. This is Mike Flanagan's new E. Um, I didn't watch his last one. Did you ever watch it? What was that one? The one with the kids. I didn't watch it because it was no, like No, because there were kids in it. We didn't and bother. I'm not really interested in kids. <coughs> this one is so interesting. I'm not familiar with the source material at all. I believe it's based on a couple of stories and it's kind of shoehorning. By who? Isn't it Edgar Allan Poe? 0 0.003. Oh my God, it's all linked. It's all coming together. 16 points. Barbara, please. What I've seen online, and I cannot say if this is correct or not, but the name would lead you to believe that it was based on a certain story, but they've kind of secretly shoehorned another one in underneath, which I think is really interesting, although I don't know anything about the source material. But I think that's really, really cool because if you are familiar with the source material, it's still like a bit of a surprise. It's well, still a bit of a twist. But that's what he did with Haunting of Hill House. Oh, yes. yes. And The Haunting of Bly Manor. Oh, are I both that. heavy based on... Hill House and the Turn of a Screw, but then they he adds his own shit. In yeah, there, so I think mean, that's really cool. Stand to reason. Um, I really like how this has kind of become what American Horror Story wanted to be. Thinks it is. We've got we now have almost like an accidental anthology series. Not really by. It's not accidental. Is it recognised as an anthology series? Well, I know that Hill House and Blind Manor were were part of the same. Thing. Oh, okay. Because it's also like the same kind of cast. Isn't That's it? what I'm saying. I really like the um, cast. Great cast. That ends up in these shows. And they're always such different characters, which I think is so fun. I'd like this Kate one... Siegel to try and like crush my head with her thighs. <laughs> I think she's okay. so excellent. She's really, really good. This one is particularly violent. I mean, they're, they're all quite explicit, aren't they? They're um, all like that. But I quite like this one as well because it's very modern-y um, for a change. The, the critiques here are just excellent. Yeah. Very modern-y. Yeah. Just talk a little bit more English-y. I would really recommend it. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, we haven't finished it. it. Well. I love... I've heard it ends well. Yeah, I love Hill House and Bly Manor. They fall under my cosy... Anything to do with, like, a house where someone's in a bed. Love that. Also, Raul Coley. Absolutely would invite him to the marriage bed. I'd chew his ass. Yeah, he's, he's very pretty, man. We're recording. Can't say that. <laughs> my next shitter. It is... I didn't know there was a word for this. Necro advertising. <laughs> oh, I know exactly what you, what that would be. That's when yes. people are using dead people to advertise stuff. Yes. My taste buds don't work because I'm dead. So I recently did a podcast on Patreon. We haven't got to talk about it. That's fine. I imagine um, you'll see a lot more of this now with AI. Yes. And it was about the movie Simone, which is about Al Pacino plays a director and he creates a, a, like an AI actress. And I was talking about it, obviously, because AI is like really prolific now. But anyway, so we got into a conversation about the fact that there are companies, and I don't know how this is legal, but I looked this up. There are companies that will use the likenesses of dead celebrities to advertise their products. And it would depend on person to person. In the Audrey Hepburn case specifically, I imagine they did ask uh, permission. I imagine most of these examples yeah, I feel probably like you have to ask permission. I just think it's kind of gross. I mean, it's difficult to regulate because obviously, yes, when someone passes away, their estate is then owned by the family, generally speaking, right? Like the like whoever owns Elvis's estate, everyone's all set. Where's getting money from? 
I'm a hooker. It's difficult to regulate and it sort of bleeds also into kind of like, well, the Beatles, didn't they put something out? And there was a bit of AI there and it was like an unreleased vocal that they put out. the same with Michael Jackson. They put out a whole album of Michael Jackson. Of unreleased unreleased. stuff. And but that's because the estate gave, gave them yes, the Yes, yeah, yeah. They, the they own it. it. They own it. But when you own... But they don't own the person so the, yeah i get that there's a lot of there's a lot of legalities involved here i just think it's gross yeah you the all of that aside you just think morally i just think it's gross. gross yeah i yeah, don't I know agree. how how they stand legally on this point but i just think that this has been going on for f- decades and decades i read that like the earliest example was like john wayne after he had died they did it and there was interestingly i think they used albert einstein to advertise british gas but now, and it came on today, and I saw it, and now it's a guy dressed up like Albert Einstein. It's not ah, CG. Interesting. So I wonder if they got a slap on the wrist or they something happened there. That's interesting. But again, Albert Einstein is one of the most like important people in our history in terms of like his contribution to society. And they've got him flogging British gas. Like it's just so rude. I, th- yeah. I find it fucking rude. That's very rude, isn't it? And disrespectful. So that's my point. And there's a word for it, Necro advertising. As soon as you said that, though, I figured out. You know what it is. Yeah. Gross. Awful. Sick bitch. This is a very, very, very recent addition to my list. Literally heard this song this morning. Not just the song, but the group as well. This is um, (gasps) Paranoia by Heartsteel. Oh. So this is a group that have come out of the... I thought um, you were going to say Kino. The video game League of Legends. For some reason, the League of Legends, like, universe has so many other facets to it outside of the game, and I'm a fan of a lot of it. They do really, really good, high-budget animated music videos, bringing musicians from all around the world to play different characters from the game. There was a group that Kiki Palmer was in, uh, something Damage, Hanson. I want to say. I can't remember, but that was, like, more r and they had the girl group KDA, which I am obsessed with. And now we have kind of like a boy group answer to KDA called Heart Steel. So again, this is taking performers from around the world. I think there's a guy from LA, there's Bake Young from Monster X is in there. It's something very like Backstreet Boys about it. It's it's just a really great catchy song. And I love the animation studio that does their music videos and Arcane Fortiche. <laughs> animation studio i think they're french they've got such an amazing style and the editing in their videos as well is like eye candy it's amazing so i'm very excited i'm hoping that this song is going to turn into an ep and then maybe we could have like a kda heart steel like mashup like we had big bang and 21 with lollipop i think that would be really cool yep don't hold your breath if you had to ask me Recount what you just said, or because you're not listening, your face like being shot in the gob. Like I'd be, I'd be a goner. I don't understand. What was your favourite? Their League of Legends. I don't even know what that is. It's a group. Is that that one? No, from League of Legends. League of Legends is that one with Chris Jenner where she's like, "Have you just attacked my village?" I don't understand. <laughs> It's good. That I was like so it. complicated though, because you were just going a mile a minute, and I felt really frightened. <laughs> I don't understand a word you were saying. This is bizarre because okay, so that's a fave. Do you want to know what my fave is? What the downfall of Captain Tom's daughter Hannah Ingram Moore. Oh, interesting. Do you detail. know? So listen, okay. I don't know anything about this. Okay. So, during the pandemic, the panny, there was a guy in the UK, he's passed away now, and we didn't pay any attention to this at the time because we were, what, drinking? I remember there being criticism that they would, like, just parade him about for, like, money, basically. There was a a war veteran called Tom Moore, I imagine. Captain Tom, he was known as. 99-year-old gentleman. He may have even turned 100. But to raise money for... I don't know what it was. I guess the NHS or something. Something like that. He would do laps around his garden, and it was, like, this big social media thing. And his aim was to raise a thousand pounds, and in the end, he raised about thirty million. British and he passed away. And because British people obviously really latch behind like certain kind of you know patriotism, ideas, Live with the patriotism, yeah, big deal. Despite you know, if you go into the street and pick any number of of dumb fucks that are just like super super into wearing a poppy, they probably couldn't tell you why they're wearing a number of homeless people that are veterans in this country. Uh, yeah. Um, but then after that, it came to light. Yes, people were like, the daughter 
is basically kind of like pushing him out to pasture, puppet mastering this like veteran, this war veteran. I vaguely for remember money this storyline for, for like um, the social media clout. For social media and for money because she set up a foundation in his name, uh, the Captain Tom Foundation, and it was to raise money. It was a charity, a registered charity to raise money for the elderly. <laughs> But then after a while, someone decided to look into it and they saw that the majority of the money raised by this charity was going into admin. Uh, so she set up a so charity. So many charities do this. I'm doing a fun run dressed as a bottle of Cinzano. She was nicking all this money and she built a giant pool spa complex in her garden. That's so oh heinous. God. But now that she's been found out that she's been taking all the money, first of all, I she hopefully have to pay it back. the bitch goes to jail. Second of all, she got so greedy with the spa complex that it actually was larger than they had planning permission for. So the whole thing has been, it went to court and they have to knock the whole thing down. <laughs> That's hysterical. <laughs> there is a word for it when you when you yeah, take, is it embezzlement? Well, you I take guess money it's from, from a charity, because you essentially can make up how much you take, right? There is a precedent for that. It's happened there will countless be rules. times. Yeah. She will have to pay it back in addition to having a fine, in addition yeah. to having to like, I'll do jail time. Put the bitch in the stocks. But, but that's also, really, really amusing. She said that the pool and the spa complex. Don't, don't say it. Is she gonna have like a cocoon moment and like you invite all the oldies over? She said it was for elderly people and it was there because of the charity. <laughs> you are and joking me. The, the 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 newspaper article I read it was just like, despite never having seen any elderly people, and when it was ruled that they were gonna knock it down, the judge was kind of like, I can't really see you sort of just having loads of old people trot through your garden to get in this pool. Like, ah. who, who the fuck are you kidding? It's so ah. stupid. Um, I have a question. So I'm glad that someone as greedy and grotesque and as opportunistic as that is uh, is seeing some consequence, I suppose. Also, her surname is Ingram. That's just terrible in yeah. this country. Because of Charles Ingram, another greedy get, they're probably related. Q Whittock. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna play. I'm going to play. She's lying, she's a bloody liar. Okay, so my final shitter is TCG Scalpers. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Trading card game scalpers. Oh, okay. What? So I've got two fucking ugly shoes. Things that I want to talk about here. Oh, here we but go. um, so scalpers. You know what a scalper is? Yeah, yeah. Someone who will buy something that is in limited supply. Yes. They will buy it up Ooh. purely with the intention of selling it on for a profit. Mm -hmm. They don't care about the thing themselves. They just want to sell it on for a profit mm -hmm. to increase scarcity. It's a big thing at the moment with trading cards, specifically Pokemon cards. That's that's been a real, real problem in the last few years. I blame Logan Paul for this because he did some content around this first edition Charizard and it just the whole fucking world lost their shit. I am prepared to give you $150,000 cash. 20% <laughs> of all the Pokemon cards in existence were printed in like the last four years. Oh that's dumb. Sometimes Pokemon will do collaborations and sometimes they're very unexpected really really cool special collaborations with different companies, venues all over the world, and they will do like a commemorative promo card that you can only get if you attend that event. And yeah, it's just that's like a right. souvenir. The most recent example of this was the Van Gogh Museum in the oh, Netherlands. Yes. Did a collaboration. I think they worked with an artist, and there were a couple of Pokemon paintings in the style of Van Gogh. And they did a small range of Pokemon merch, and there was a design of Pikachu in like the straw hat and really, really cute. You could buy like plushies and stuff. And they had a Pikachu in the straw hat promo card and it was done like a painting, like a Van Gogh painting. Yeah, I remember seeing it. And this was supposed to go on, I think, for maybe a week. They were so inundated with scalpers. There are clips, uh, you're, you're, I'm sure you can put one in, of people just fucking mobbing the museum for these Pokemon cards. They all disappeared in the first day and they canceled the entire event. It should limit them. There was, I don't think there was any purchase limits. It should have been one per person or one per credit card. Oh, I see, yeah. And I don't think there was any limit. Which should have been. so stupid. Even Disney World now does this with a lot of their things. It's a limit of like three yeah. per people mm -hmm. because that's a big thing as well as people buying merch from the parks. Because obviously you can't normally buy that merch unless you have a park ticket. It's just really sad because now we'll probably never get an event like that again. Well, you know we're never gonna go. No, but like now I now like the people can't 
have those cards because they're on eBay for like thousands of pounds. I know, but then people, again, people, human beings are selfish, greedy assholes. My last shitter then, final one, is our kitchen bin <laughs> is broken. <laughs> and this is the third one of these, but we're not buying another one. Oh, the first one did as well. It's it this did. bin and you waft your hand over it. Don't say waft over it. And there's a sensor and it goes... <laughs> And it opens. So you've, there's no pedal. I mean, it's the, it's the epitome of laziness, isn't it? No, it's not just laziness, though. It's like hygiene. I like that. Yeah, don't you to don't have to it. touch it, which is lovely. You just so if I'm cooking, I guess a pedal bin is the same thing, isn't it? It is. Pedal, yeah, pedal bins are bins, quite bins, angry, though, Yeah, because they, they come up and slam against the yeah. wall, and it's a bit kind of like... But anyway, so this is lovely because you can do like a little sort of like lady die moment and it opens and then when it comes down again, you can put your fingers there gently and then as it slams, you can do Julia Roberts' Pretty Woman. <laughs> The first version of this lasted us for a while. The second one, did it matter how many times we bleached it or washed it out? It stank of- Yeah, there was something that like- What the fuck was I wrong with it? there was like some kind of bin juice that got into like the actual- Yeah, it's like there was a prawn mechanism. got lost in it and it just stank of shit. I and we cleaned that so intensely and the smell would not go. So the second one had to go and we've just got another one and the mechanism's broken on it. But it's been like a different problem each time. Different problem each time. So what's the solution? Just buy different Just bin. dig a hole in the kitchen, that'll do. What? I really like this bin though. So it's gonna have to be a fourth bin. <laughs> it's just but so it's shit. convenient. It's and it's so, shit though. I really like, especially when you're cooking, you don't have to like touch it. You don't have to, but now you do it and it opens and then it stays open. Why don't we just not have a lid on it though? Because then it stinks. That's dirty. Is it? Yeah. It's out! Thank you so much for joining us for another Faves and Shitters. I've had fun. It's been a bit stressful, actually, recounting some of my shitters. <sighs> yeah, you you barely took a breath during that, actually. I had lots to talk um, about today. Yeah, and I, I guess I appreciate you speaking quickly to just really try and get it in. There is going to be exclusive extra garbage from us that you can find on our Patreon. It's out! If you'd like to head over there and find some of that, the address for it will be arriving on screen just presently. <laughs> What you gonna do with all that ash? <laughs> That's very like, can you do that? You know, he'll go, I'm not because I've got lips. <laughs> Some of the guys over on the Patron get birthday shout outs, Nova, including. But not limited to. Very, very swish. For the seventh, it's Alex and Perfect Glory. Sounds a bit rude. Happy birthday, Alex. Perfect Glory is a great name. Um, y Happy birthday. I mean, For Alex the... is also a lovely name. For the 8th of November, thank you very much. Remember, remember, the 8th of November. Gunpowder. Guy Fawkes. That's not the A 8th, pot. is it? Pot. Oh my God, you guys have such problems. I feel so terrible for you. The 8th is James and Russell. Happy birthday, James, and happy birthday, happy Russell. Happy birthday. You don't hear Russell very often, do you? There's a lot of comedians called Russell. Yeah, what's that about? What do you mean? <laughs> 9th of November, Ryan in the TARDIS. Happy birthday, Ryan. In the TARDIS, that's nice. Happy birthday. Wee! Wee! Is this your sort of boo, like... Boo, 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 boo. Your like late, later life moment, like a late stage moment. That's the Doctor Who theme. Oh, on the 12th... Day of Christmas, my true love sent to me. Tiramisu. It is Kirk's birthday. Yes. Happy birthday. It is. And then Caroline and Craig share a birthday on the 13th. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. I think there's a few more though, because we are still playing catch up. Apologies. Hello! For the 16th, it was Dean's birthday. On Happy 16th. birthday, Dean. Happy birthday. And the 17th, there's three, Freddie, Diana, and Josh. Happy birthday, Freddie. Happy birthday, Diana. And happy birthday, Josh. That's a party, isn't it? Josh! Yes! Oh, is that the Blair Witch Project? Yeah. Good Lord. You've really changed the vibe in here, haven't you? <laughs> there's also a Twitch that we like to play games on. Last time, I drove everyone wild by saying that I am playing Baldur's Gate on the Twitch, and then I showed the guns. Uh, which I mean, I've done it again. Uh, I think it's really funny. Keep your panties you say, up. You say Boulder's Gate and people assume Boulder's Gate 3. Don't. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm like baiting people over. They'll <laughs> realise when they get there, but by then it's too late. It's too late. Thank you for coming. Any parting messages? No. 
Nothing at all. Absolutely nothing. Do we have to leave on a joke though, don't we? Do we? Yeah, we do. Oh, and what was Postman Pat called when he was made redundant? Why is this also a song? <laughs> What's the answer? Pat. <laughs> yeah! Just Pat. And a Captain Tom's turd of a daughter to our brand new patrons, Lila Lollipop, Hannah Byatt, Chloe McCatty, a Friday Adams, Keel Bather and Natalie Snook. There's like a ringing in this room now from that Yeah, sound. because I love that joke, the Postman Pat joke. Is what was he joke? called when he was made redundant? Well, Pat, he's called Pat. Join the Patron, we'll do a shot of Patron.